Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to World Fintech Festival Finland on my behalf as well. My name is Teppo Havo and I'm head of startups, growth and sustainability in Danske Bank Finland. But today, today I have the honor of facilitating this panel, uh, sustainability as a driver for successful Nordic fintechs. The topic is extremely in uh, interesting and so are our guests. So let's uh, let's see who we have on board today. A warm welcome to Pekka Sivonen, Ex Executive Director, Digi uh, Digital Transformation of Finnish Industries from Business Finland. Welcome. Ilona Kivimäki, Business Dev Development uh, Director of Sustainability Services from Enfuse. Welcome, Ilona. And then Hasan Malik, CEO and founder from P3 Cloud Asset. We are remote, con uh, re uh, remote connection from Pakistan, actually. Good to have you on board. Thanks, Teppo. Nice to be here with you guys. Excellent. Great to have you all on board. And uh, now let's have a short introductional round. Uh, and uh, let's start with uh, Ilona here. One minute. Please be, please be brief here. Okay. We only have 30 minutes. Sure. Uh, my name is Ilona from Enfuse. We are a global an innovative uh, payment service provider uh, based in the Nordics. The company was established in 2016. Our core business areas are um, card issuing and payment processing as a service. We also offer open banking and our recent service, um, My Carbon Action, which turns uh, geographical lifestyle and scientific data into climate action and awareness. Thank you. Less than a minute. Loving that. <laughs> now, Pekka. Okay, my name is Pekka Sivonen. I'm, I'm representing uh, Finnish Innovation Funding Agency Business Finland, which is a government uh, body to fund innovations in our uh, country about the volume of 700 million euros with the matching basis of private funding every euro that we spend. Uh, two, two euros approximately comes from private sector. So we have a huge impact into the Finnish society. I have a 30 years background as an entrepreneur in systems integration and mobile software and uh, have been working with the government uh, for five years uh, responsible for digital transformation of Finnish industries. Thanks, Becca. Glad to be here. And, and then the last member, the, and the only one who was who not wearing a mask, so Hassan, <laughs> one minute brief for us. So ju 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 just to just to prove my compliance to rules, the mask is handy, but I'm in a <laughs> private space here, in a very beautiful location, uh, in, uh, in in Karachi, in the city of Karachi. So uh, P3 itself is a payment technology provider. So we set out with a mission uh, uh, mid 2014 to build what we call the payment system of the future. And so uh, our take on on the the world of the future is that there are a host of interactions and a number of those interactions culminate into transactions. So therefore banks, insurance companies, service providers, uh, industry and enterprise all need a payment system capability at the heart so they can facilitate interactions and transactions. We're well on our way as a technology enabler, a technology provider uh, with customers uh, across Asia, uh, also uh, in the Middle East and uh, expanding fast. So. Thanks for having us on board with you. Great to have you all. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I have to say that I already love this, this panel because these are the first people who almost reached the one minute line. I've done this a couple of times. So it's time to get things rolling here. Let's start by discussing a bit about the overall team, sustainability in, in fintech segment. Now, why is sustainability such a hot topic in fintech world right now? And let's start with you, Elon. Yes, uh, well, sustainability has become a very essential thing for, for all of the companies across different industries uh, because, of course, now we have increased awareness about the topic, the urgency of this global issue. And I think uh, the customer demand is what making it kind of more, more uh, urgent at this moment. There is a huge uh, gap in the available consumer knowledge, so what they could do in order to become more sustainable, how they could take steps uh, into more kind of uh, low carbon uh, lifestyles and so on. 
uh, and 70% uh, of greenhouse gas emissions are attributed directly to the consumption. So we as individuals, uh, consumers, could really make a huge impact. And of course now we are demanding and we are lacking the tools to do so. so uh, there's already different solutions and services, uh, for example, in the, in the food industry. So you could uh, get the carbon footprint for specific product or, for example, uh, companies that are focusing on the uh, recycling uh, and uh, making uh, yarn of fire and so on. So I think that especially for the fintechs, so it's a, it's a perfect position because we uh, could provide the holistic view to the consumers of what is their environmental impact of, of their actions. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Uh, true. And now Pekka and, and Hassan, what's, what's your take on this? Yeah, sustainability definitely a major megatrend uh, of today and tomorrow. Uh, we've been uh, defining our new strategy for Business Finland uh, for time frame 2025, 2030, and it's all about sustainability. We will be basically spending all of our money in supporting sustainable ideas and technologies originating uh, from Finland, including fintech. And uh, if you look into the agenda of uh, European Commission and European Union for the next seven years, 2021, 20, 27 timeframe, it's all about green deal and digital transformation of uh, industries. And these two things are very much uh, combined and intertwined. And uh, it's a twin transition for our continent and Finland wants to be a forerunner, a thought leader for the continent and uh, a role model, basically. Europe wants to be a role model for the rest of the world. Finland wants to e evolve as the role model of Europe. Thanks, Becca. And Hassan? Yeah, so uh, from our uh, sort of thought process, our worldview, uh, sustainability is a, is a, is a, is a huge uh, subject uh, uh, matter. It's a, it's a, it's a big, big, uh, it's a big question it's a big concept to sort of internalize and translate so when we sort of went about looking at it uh, in, in in our place in the universe we sort of took direction from uh, the un's uh, uh, sustainable development goals the sdgs the 17 goals and uh, looking at what we do as a company and where we cut across uh, the 17 goals we find that we end up playing a role uh, that will across multiple themes within the sdgs uh, we needed, uh, you know, some, some sort of absolute clarification in terms of what our impact would be. So the SDGs provided a very, very good framework from that point of view. And they cover, of course, as my uh, sort of colleagues there have talked about, they cover everything from climate to, to consumption. Uh, the three themes that, that, that we've uh, uh, considered heavily uh, within P3 in terms of our impact and what we want to do in terms of mainstreaming, uh, are the environment, it's the social impact, as well as the economic impact. So, uh, uh, like I said at the beginning, when we set out to build P3, we see the world as interactions and transactions. And so we see that interactions have to be responsible, transactions has to, have to be responsible, and the, and, and, and the confluence of both of those coming together creates that sustainable lifestyle, not just from an individual's point of view, but from an ecosystem point of view. So that's, that's, that's our take on it, and that's where we're playing sort of our efforts in the overall global initiative. So very, very holistic view on, on, on this thing. I think we all agree that the, the megatrend thing here is, is the ma one of the main drivers. But I would like to ask you a question about the maturity of fintech industry. Many of these, these companies are relatively young. As we know, maybe the trend has been there for four or five years. I know that there has been fintech companies a lot longer. But how, how much do you think that these, uh, these maturing companies are actually, uh, do they have more possibilities to probe new kind of uh, revenue streams and, and uh, look outside of the box, so to say, on, uh, from, from fintech point of view? How do you see that? I will be using my divine powers to order somebody to answer. So let's start with you, Hassan. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, as, as, as entrepreneurs uh, and, and those that are involved in entrepreneurship and in, in startups and uh, sort of maturing uh, fintechs, uh, growth and scale companies, 
uh, you've got to start from the outside in, frankly speaking, and that's how we see the world again. As I, as I said, we've looked at the themes that from there we've tried to, tried to draw out our purpose, our mission and vision uh, of what we're seeking to achieve. So when you look at it from an outside in point of view, you've got to look at the value propositions you're taking to market. So the value propositions that you define need to solve a problem or fulfill a need which is in line with the values as a company that you've adopted. So if, like I said, our mission is very much focused around how do we create a, a, you know, a, 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 a positive impact on the environment? How do we create a better outcome from a societal and, and, and socio uh, uh, point of view? How do we enable the economic activity uh, uh, for the micro merchant, but also the largest merchant out there. How do we do it within a geography? How do we do it cross border? So when you take the themes that are driving you and you're creating value propositions for the market, you then uh, translate that, you mainstream it yourself by the actual impact that your products and services will create in the market. So for me, it's not, a, uh, it's not an issue of whether it's a mature company or a new company or something that was formed recently. I think for us, uh, all of us that are involved in the uh, greater gambit of uh, financial technology, uh, you know, we've got to be very conscious of how we're designing and defining these value propositions. So age absolutely does not matter. Uh, you know, just, uh, just be responsible, look at the impact and go for it. And I, I will, Ilona, if you're not reaching out uh, for your microphone right now, I, I will be reaching this a little bit. So uh, what you said there, Hassan, um, a minute ago, uh, how, do, how do you see the situation on the market at the moment? What, what is happening there? And let's start with uh, both P3 and Enfuse. You have your own sustainability linked products on the market or, or holistically uh, sustainable products on the market. So Ilona, can you tell us a little bit about what you have created for the sustainable market in, in Enfuse? Yes, uh, My Carbon Action is a tool that helps consumers to get more insights on their um, everyday actions, so the environmental impact of, of every transaction that uh, they they uh, make. Uh, end user can track uh, carbon footprint in six different categories, and also in addition to providing uh, insights on the environmental impact uh, of every transaction, we also would like to educate our customers, so we offer uh, 100 smart tips, which is different suggestions on how a user could uh, lower their daily uh, emissions. Uh, and we uh, offer this to the uh, offer turnkey solution to the banks, uh, fintechs, merchants, and 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 uh, getting back to what uh, Hassan said, I think that uh, the maturity really doesn't matter because we have, for example, traditional banks mm -hmm. part of our uh, customer base, and also uh, newcomers, different fintechs or or, or neo banks, and 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 for for all of them the sustainability is crucial part. And especially for the traditional banks, of course, now you can already see how some of them has taken kind of big steps towards being more responsible. They have set uh, goals for the company. And for, for, for ones who don't, they become soon quite irrelevant to the consumers. And then if we think about the fintechs or the NIA banks who are just coming to the market, uh, they all breathe sustainability. So they just uh, cannot even uh, be without. So it's kind of right to exist. Uh, for them, so they want to support uh, customers to adopt a lower, uh, low carbon lifestyle. They also want to support uh, companies to reduce their emissions. And, and uh, Enfuse is, is an interesting, and what I tried to reach out um, there earlier and probably failed badly. Thank you, Hassan, for saving me there. Uh, but exactly like you said, uh, Enfuse had business before you created this service. So your, your roots are in, in more traditional fintech side, and then you have expanded to the sustainable side, right? Yes, exactly. So we offer our card issuing and payment processing as a service and also open banking and uh, sustainability has been one of our core values since uh, its beginning. And of course, then we thought uh, based what I already mentioned earlier, so 70% of greenhouse gas emissions are directly attributed to the consumption. And then we thought that uh, if you really would like to lower your individual carbon footprint, you need to be able to measure it based on the actual consumption. And that's what uh, where we come at the perfect fit, because we are uh, we have a license to store and process uh, transaction data, uh, customer account information, so we are able to to calculate the carbon uh, footprint on very detailed level. Yes, and Hasan, you have a bit more holistic view on on this, on on P3. Yeah, so so 
again, you know, I, I go back to our roots of, of when we were setting up the company in the in, in September 2014. You know, we looked at we looked at it more from a from a global problem point of view. And and so the company was actually born global. The first customer was signed in Thailand as opposed to in Finland. So uh, and, and, and so again, our sort of how we've been translating our propositions in line with the themes that we follow into the impact that we create. Uh, uh, you know, for us, as an example, financial inclusion is, is a major theme in the company. And that is what we're driving with the outcomes we create. So uh, uh, as, as you said earlier, I'm in Pakistan at the moment. I'm in the city of Karachi. This is the financial hub of the, of the country. 200 million people, uh, there are two very interesting things the company is doing here. Uh, we're building out a traditional bank into a complete digital bank, uh, and that digital bank uh, soup to nuts, uh, all aspects of it, and that digital bank is due to go live in, in December, which is why I could not take uh, a flight back to be there with you guys. And the bank, uh, that, you know, which is which is uh, has taken a very bold step, I have to say, in the right direction, is a very successful trade and corporate services bank, which also offers uh, consumer and retail banking. But then they've said, you know what, we're going to go and 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 do something much much bigger, exponential reach and scale with the right type of uh, digitalization uh, capability, which is what. B3 brings in to address 18 to 30 market segment and a big chunk of them are not part of the financial uh, 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 sort of circle. So how do we create financial inclusion? How do we bring more and more people, millions of people into that financial services circle so that economic impact, social benefits, and of course, uh, uh, where, where you have the ability to live more responsibly, you have the means, then of course you think about the clim climatic impact as well. But if you're on subsistence and you're, you know, you, 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 the difference is, are you gonna have a meal at the end of the day or not? People wouldn't think about some of those high, higher value actions. So for us, uh, I'm gonna take an extra minute here, for us, <laughs> being a Finnish company, coming out of Finland, having those Finnish values that are imbued into the way we think, uh, the life that we live out there, and I'm very happy that uh, I participate in that life after having lived in Singapore, the UK, and so forth, uh, that it's a social, uh, uh, it's a very uh, conscious society in terms of its impact, right? The, 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 the societal awareness is very high, and it's those values that we are trying to globalize wherever we can have that impact. Uh, uh, there is another thing that we're doing quite large in terms of commerce. I'll talk about that later. Thank you. I really appreciate that because I, I was about to give you a ban. So now, Pekka has been uh, awfully quiet for a long time, and this is directed uh, straight to you. So basically, some people have been talking about what, what uh, Hassan actually referred here a little bit, that the, that the Nordic region, Finland, among uh, the Nordic countries here, is, is turning into a hotbed for sustainable fintech solutions. Do you agree with this statement? And if you do, what, what are the drivers that, that make it possible? Absolutely. I think uh, what's unique in the Nordic countries, and especially in Finland, is the, the ecosystem kind of thinking where we facilitate mechanisms with our funding uh, uh, to, to bring in big and small companies together to tackle bigger challenges. And uh, the kind of uh, disruptive thinking and exponential thinking that Hassan gave us an example is exactly what we are looking for because there's a lot of opportunities evolving, uh, globally speaking, uh, for the fintech sector. And uh, I would uh, stress and emphasize everybody in their mind to make out mind map of a scenario, how the end game in this fintech sector will look like when you add the Chinese players, you put the central bank of China, you put uh, Alibaba, Tencent, and uh, the aggressive sustainability and climate agenda that China has. So that's the likely direction of the competition that you, everybody hearing this will have. And at least they will be for sure part of the end game you should figure out the map, who do I need to partner with in order to be able to compete in that or even still exist during the times of this, when this uh, end game takes place. Uh, Nordic countries uh, have a great amount uh, of uh, knowledge in uh, mobile communications, mobile software, 
everything in our life is going to happen in mobile anyways. And uh, this is exactly the reason why Nordics are emerging uh, as a hotbed in this technology. This is the home of Nokia and Ericsson and uh, mobile communications is everywhere in, in, in our lives. So there, there are definitely a lot of factors that are, are drivers. What about our entrepreneurs? Uh, what about Enfuse? What about P3? Be quick, raise some things that are really well here in Finland from fintech point of view. Uh, well, I think that um, if we think about sustainability topic, the consumers here, uh, so the end user, I think they're all sustainability oriented. That's the per per perfect market to kind of uh, launch and test different solutions because people are of course, they are more aware about the the global issue. They also are more educated uh, on some in some extent, and also they believe uh, what what scientists uh, tol tell them. So I think that's that's very important uh, part of, of them. So the kind of market readiness I is very good here. And Hasan, you you have jumped from from Finnish soil uh, directly to global competition and, and global customers, but. What are what are the key factors from your point of view? You could have your headquarters anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, we could have when we were setting up the company. Uh, it of course helps uh, my 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 university sweetheart that I that I married in 1996 is a Finn. Uh, so you know, we've we've lived everywhere around the world together. And then when it was uh, the time to set up P3, you know, the options we had were Singapore, which I think was a superb choice. And uh, we could have definitely done it. But at the same time, I was very inspired by the annual holidays, uh, winter or summer, uh, depending on the year in Finland. And what I came to know of the Finnish people and how, how things, uh, things are there. And so I can share my view as, as a non-local uh, to yourselves, as someone who's, who's an outs outsider. My view is that I see, and this is important to the point of the opportunity uh, in the Nordics for the fintechs. I see Finland as the top of the world. You're physically actually on the top of the world. And you're also an example of the good life when when humanity at large thinks about what what good life should be all about. So so it's already happening in your country. And, uh, and uh, I have to say the Finns as a nation have done a superb job. Uh, your people at large, as well as your government, has done a superb job of creating that very viable environment. Now, now, when I wanted to build P3, I needed to be in an environment where I could be inspired. And, and so now everyone in the company is literally looking at the way things work in Finland. Uh, you just look at aspects of financial inclusion. You look at uh, equality. You look at economic access. These are all, again, tying back to the sustainable uh, uh, development goals of, of the UN. And when we see these things working and we live and breathe in that environment, it allows us to create those value propositions and also take them credibly to the world. So if I did exactly the same thing as an example in some other part of the world, uh, you know, where those values are not alive, it's very difficult to internalize, live, breathe them and make them part of your convictions to take them to market. So I would my message to all fintechs out there is, that you're in the right sort of you're in the right live lab already. Utilize that, learn from there, create value propositions that solve problems and fulfill needs around the world, which is exactly what we're doing, and that's the opportunity for everyone. Thanks. And and following that topic a little bit, now now we were talking a lot of good things about Nordics and and, and, and Finland here. But if we look the Nordics as a market from from fintech point of view this might be a good place to start a company but is this a good place to market your services your products or should well where, where is the magic happening in the world of fintech nowadays so ilona how do how do you see that situation from your company's point of view yes i think like on a global level a lot of the companies are now uh, t talking about the sustainability that's kind of given mm -hmm. but uh, who actually act on it uh, so there's still uh, quite quite few examples especially if we think about like the fintech world and whether they, for example, offer some carbon footprint calculation or carbon offsetting and so on. So I really want to see more uh, in the Nordics as well. But uh, and I'm very interested to, to, to hear about um, um, others examples. But based on our experience, we have seen huge interest in the Netherlands and UK. Mm -hmm. So those are the markets who are actually taking huge steps. They are 
really already on top of the edge and they are uh, did a lot of the research, different testing and proof of concepts of solutions. So they are uh, really taking this forward. Where then again, especially in the banking sector, for example, in the Nordics, uh, banks are waiting and kind of taking a look at who is going to be the next, probably outside of the Nordics. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I really hope that that uh, the Nord Nordics uh, companies and, and, and uh, fintechs will, will kind of uh, become more braver and, and start acting on it quite soon. I don't know if you know this, but I'm from a bank, so <laughs> I, I kind of felt that. But Pekka, how, how do you see talk the after <laughs> this panel. <laughs> uh, Pekka, how do you feel the, uh, see the situation? Uh, the tech savviness of the people in the Nordics uh, is very high. This is an uh, excellent and um, probably the best test lab for uh, launching new services because peco people take them very, very easily and the reception is good. But then uh, for the companies, that's not big of a too, uh, big enough uh, of a market uh, area because we are basically just 30 plus million people, which is half of the size of California, state of California. And uh, but very condensed area, very focused on on R and D, uh, very high education system, producing new engineers, uh, architects, etc. Uh, for the demand. Ob Obviously, Finland, since we got more than 10,000 people that were released a uh, few years back from, from Nokia, there's a great availability of talent here, and we are attracting a lot of more talent to, to Finland to support the, the demand the comp for, of the companies uh, uh, for new, new talent that are uh, willing to grow here. But then you need to partner with uh, 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 companies coming from elsewhere, having a footprint in other geographics, and that's what we need to see happening next. Now we're almost out of time. And I have one more question for all of you, but be really quick. So a, a quick last round here. What is the key factor of creating a successful, sustainable fintech product or service? What would be the top one thing that you would uh, like to take into account? And Ilona, start. Yes, uh, for us it's uh, transparency and also uh, scientific uh, um, base. Uh, so it should be strong because of course there now has been a lot of the discussions and also speculations around the sustainability, greenwashing and so on. So of course uh, for the companies it's very important to ensure that if they uh, uh, provide, for example, the carbon footprint calculation tools to the consumers, so they are based on the reliable calculation methods. And then, of course, for the for the end users, they need to be insured as well on the other end that when they see the carbon footprint for 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 some specific product, it is what it is, and it's it based on the scientific research. So I think it's 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 crucial at this point, especially when we are kind of doing uh, new services and uh, around the sustainability, it's, it's important to establish this trust between uh, end users and, and companies. And I will stop you there. Excellent answer. Hassan, how do you see this? One thing that you would like to raise. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the, the common de denominator, regardless of where you are globally, is, is the, the end user. Think of human-centric approach. What is the, who is the individual that will benefit or will 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 solve a problem using your product or service. So the need you fulfill the problem you solve. Keep that individual in mind because their context is different market by market. In Finland, our context is different to, as an example, the context in in Pakistan or some, some let's even say some parts of the U.S. So keep the individual, the final beneficiary, in mind. Loving that. And then Pekka. I would say that uh, the world is in a situation where it screams for ecosystemic thinking. Uh, partnership like collaboration with disruptive ideas. We've been seeing over the last two decades um, private-public partnerships. We need to add a fourth pillar, including people into our thinking, whatever business we are in, and uh, that's the uh, secret source uh, for success going forward. Secret source. Thanks, thanks, Pekka. Uh, all right, all right. A lot of things squeezed in very, very short time and uh, in one panel discussion. Many things were covered and uh, many, many, many questions still out there waiting to be answered. Do not hesitate to be in touch uh, with the organizers here. They can probably get you in, in touch with uh, Hassan, Ilona, Enfuse, P3, Business Finland and Pekka. 
So if you have any questions, I believe that our, our guests today are more than happy to answer these. So I would like to thank our panelists for participating. Uh, this was a great opportunity for me to learn more. And huge thanks for our audience as well. Have a nice day.